Well, good morning. It's a joy to see you all here, whether you're in person or online, friends. Welcome to Atlanta Commons Navis Inc. UMC. I am excited to be here. Um, for those of you who are online, we know we've been having quite a few problems with our audio, um, and we're working on it. So today, um, I'll remain in the pulpit, so just type in the comments um, if that's sounding better to you than it has in the past so that Connor knows and we can make some adjustments. Um, so friends, for those of you who are here and who are accustomed to me being down there, um, I'll be I'll be right here for the duration of the service today. A couple of quick announcements. we got Bible study starting up on Thursday. We've got a number of different events happening. They're all listed in your bulletin. But one of the big things that's happening this week is Ash Wednesday. Um, Ash Wednesday service will be at 7 o'clock here. Um, throughout the morning, you can also come and get ashes um, at any, any time between the hours of 9 and 1. Um, and then we'll just get a moment in the evening to sit and reflect on our own mortality um, and, and confess our sins before God. And it's been this season reflecting as we prepare for Easter. And, and we'll dive in a little bit deeper um, during the sermon time about what that means. We've got craft night coming up on the 20th. If you want to be a part of that, let Vicki know. We've got pizza and a movie on the 17th. And we've got the socializers gathering together, that small group, on the 28th. So lots of things going on this month. It is We're approaching the season of Lent, and Lent is always busy. Um, so I'm excited to see the good things that are happening. We've got a special Young Disciples project happening today. A lot of good stuff going on. So if you want to know more, find me, find one of our greeters, they know what's going on, um, and we'll be happy to get you plugged in. But together, right, we're in this moment where we're here to worship, so let's take together a deep breath, and let us turn our hearts and minds to the worship of our Lord. Let us pass the peace of Christ with one another by saying, peace be with you, and responding, and also with you. Join me in the invitation to worship. God, speak to us, God. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit burn in our hearts. Open our minds to hear not only your love, but the hope and life of the gospel. Show us how to be a light in the darkness so that the whole world might learn to believe. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in 
You may be seated. Can you join me in the centering prayer? Almighty God, your son Jesus is the light of the world. Help us to shine with the brightness of who Jesus is, that he may be known, worshiped, and serve as a guide to the ends of the earth, now and forever. Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. The scripture lesson. This morning is for Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. I know a lot of you ask, what does a pastor do throughout the week? Outside of stand here and preach a sermon. And there's lots of things that we that you know pastors do, but I think one of the hardest things that we do as preachers, right, is to take a passage of scripture that is difficult to understand and to try not to explain them. It'd be like if we're sitting on a beach watching the sunrise or the sunset 
and listening to someone try and explain the science behind the coloration of the sky, the shades of orange or purple or pinks, or explain why the sun bounces off objects in a shade of yellow rather than white like it does the rest of the day. Sometimes it's okay to just sit with the beauty and the mystery of the moment. Some people say that uh, this Transfiguration Sunday is the last day in exploring who Jesus is. But I say that this week marks the beginning of our shift towards the cross to explore the ministries of what Jesus did. So we take the time to prepare ourselves for that moment right before Easter and during Easter where we get to experience Jesus' suffering and his death and his resurrection as we look at our own lives and take a moment to say, what do I need to change? So we take a step back and we prepare then to rejoin the world knowing how deeply we are loved by God. And we start that journey together by looking at how the disciples see this moment where Jesus is shown to them for the very first time. So we join in this gospel lesson as Jesus calls some of his closest friends to go up a mountain to spend some time by themselves. And in this moment, Jesus is transformed, transfigured. He's changed before their very eyes. And his clothes turn whiter than they could ever imagine. And Jesus and the disciples are joined by the prophets like Moses and Elijah, who represent both the law and all the other prophets. Now, Jesus' friend Peter, he's unsure what to do, and he is scared. But like the angels say, do not be afraid. And Peter tries to capture this moment by building tents for each one of these giants and the faith before him and he tries to explain what's going on and to plan for what should happen next but then God steps in and says look this is my son the beloved listen to him does it sound familiar it should because of the same words that we hear at Jesus's baptism So the disciples, they start to look around for Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets, and they see only Jesus, the Son of God, a embodiment of God's love, standing before them. And they head back down this mountain where they've spent some time alone, and Jesus tells them to keep all that happened to themselves, that this moment was just for them to share until Jesus is resurrected and his true identity gets to be revealed to the entire world. Now I know for me, there's been some moments where I simply need to spend some time apart. A moment where I turn off my phone, my tablet, the TV, the computers, and just step away from the world to just be by myself or with close family and friends. And I take that time each week on my Sabbath day, and and sometimes we find ourselves forced to take that rest when when someone steps in and they take the kids out for a night, or they hand us a movie and some popcorn, and they say, just go rest, just go be for a little bit. And in those moments, sometimes we notice that suddenly we have the solution to a problem that's been bothering us, or we get to see the ways that in this busy world things have been changed. It's a moment where we ourselves get to be transformed. And some of us in those moments get to recognize who Jesus for who he really is. We get to see God in all of God's glory. Moments where we step away forever changed. But then we have to come down off that mountaintop and rejoin the land of the living, sometimes not knowing how to respond. Friends, we are the Peter and the James and the John of this morning's gospel lesson. And as we come down off that mountaintop, out of those revelations moments, out of those moments where we feel like we have all the answers, we have to find a way to implement them into our lives, to actually do those things that we've realized during that time apart. Now, this season of church life is probably one of the most important parts of the Christian year, a season of Lent, which officially starts on Wednesday. But it's this season where the people traditionally walk through what it means to be a Christian, what it means to follow Jesus, what it means to be a people of love. 
And this time we spend together before Easter, uh, we join into this lifelong process of being transformed into who God has called us to be. We spend some time intentionally praying, intentionally reading scripture and, and repenting and admitting what we've done wrong and trying to make things right with others, all leading up to this Easter season. But first, we have to stop and pause. And listen. So today we take the moment to hear God say, Stop. Just take it all in. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm telling you to do. So we take this moment to see God in all of his glory standing before us in dazzling white light to the moment where the law and the prophets disappear and Jesus is what fills the screen, to see what is yet to come when Christ comes in final victory, to see the moment where all those who are ostracized, who are pushed away, the least, the last, and the lost, where they're no longer recognizable because they're living among the rest of us because we're taking care of them, to see that moment where we all live a life of love, and a life of forgiveness and reconciliation, a life where we are faithfully walking with Jesus, living out what God has called us to do. So we take a moment to stop and to listen and to realize what it's going to take to get there. Now, friends, remember that Jesus, too, was on the mountain with Peter and James and Paul. Jesus, too, climbed up the mountain to spend some time away from everyone and everything to listen to God. And Jesus, too, sees this path of love laid out before him. And Jesus, too, had to come down off that mountaintop and to figure out what that path is and what to do with what he just saw God do. And throughout the coming weeks, it's important for us to remember that Jesus' ministry, what he did for God, didn't stop on top of the mountain. Jesus came down off that mountaintop. And even as he comes down off that mountaintop to figure out what he had just experienced with all his friends, Jesus never stopped teaching he never stopped sharing God with others. He never stopped healing the sick and feeding the hungry and eating with sinners. Jesus never stopped loving. And even as Jesus himself was transformed, he never stopped doing what God had called him to do. Now, friends, every Sunday morning when we come to this place, we gather together to put the rest of the world aside and to climb up the mountaintop. We take a moment to pause and to see and to listen to what God is telling us to do, to listen to what God has been doing in the world around us. We listen for what God wants us to do. We pray together. We read scripture. We sing a song together. right? We forgive each other. And we come together and worship. And we take the time to look at all the ways in our life where we're called to be changed, to take in the ways where the Holy Spirit is pushing us to do some transformational work, not only in the world, but within ourselves. And every time we come up to this mountain, we have to go back down that mountain and walk out into the world, rejoining the brokenness and the hurt and the suffering. Now Peter and James and John, they were ordered not to tell anyone what they had seen. But we are called to do things differently. They were told to keep quiet until after Jesus was risen from the dead. Well, friends, in case we've forgotten, Christ has been risen from the dead. And we are now responsible for sharing what we see on the mountaintop every time we visit it. We are responsible for continuing the work that Jesus did, even as we try to figure out what's next. And as we join with other disciples in Jesus, with our fellow learners, we have to do so mindful of what God is trying to tell us. 
constantly listening how we're going to share it with others and continue to act on what we already know to be true, that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus was crucified, that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose from the grave, that we're called to love God with all of our hearts and all of our minds and all of our strength, that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, that we're called to listen to Jesus and all that he taught us and to live like Jesus did. Friends, I look around at this community, not just here, but the community at large, and I ask myself, when are we going to come down off the mountaintop and live out what we already know? When are we going to take the moment to stop and to listen to what God is telling us so that we can continue to grow in our faith? When will we recognize that we might not be the only ones on top of the mountain? That not only was Jesus there, but so were fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Peter and James and John, they were certainly not alone. And that tells me that what God has shown me, God has shown to someone else too. So when will we take the time to share what we've experienced and seek to talk about it and figure out what it means with others? When are we going to come down off the mountaintop and live like the disciples that we are called to be? When are we going to act like the disciples that we have promised God and promised others that we are going to be? When will we allow ourselves to change? Friends, as we come off the mountaintop today, let us remember what God has shown us. Let us remember that we're called to talk about it with others. Let us take the moment to actually listen to what God has said and to share it. We're not called to live this life alone. And friends, it doesn't matter how old someone is. God shares things with them too. And if we haven't been listening to what God is trying to say, let us take a moment to stop and pause and listen. Because it's not every day that we actually get to see and hear what God is doing around us. Friends, the time is now. What is it that we're waiting for? It's time to come down off that mountaintop, to be changed, and to do those things that God has asked us to do. God has asked us to be a people who love, who do justice, who walk humbly. God has called us to be a people who live in a community of love and forgiveness together. And that's why we take the time to pray for one another, to pray with one another, to share where we're seeing God at work in the world, to share where we want to see God at work more clearly, to know where we are called to be, beacons of light and hope and love in this world. So together, let us pray. Good and gracious God, Thank you for showing us who you truly are, for showing us clearly how we're called to live. God, we know we don't always get it right. We know that in some places we get it right, in some places we get it wrong. But God, we know that you offer us forgiveness and a chance to do better. God, help us to remember those around us who are sick and injured, who are in need of comfort as they grieve even today, for those who are in need of guidance and direction. God, help us to see where you are answering all of our prayers and where you're calling us to go so that we might be the answer to someone else's prayer. God, hear now the names of those that weigh heavy on our hearts and on our minds as we lift them up to you.
God, we give you thanks for all that you have given us. Help us to see you most clearly, to see where you are calling us to go, how you are calling us to come down off the mountaintop of seeing you and experiencing you, and how we're called to share it with others. As we give thanks, as we together join in that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, part of what it means to come down off the mountaintop is to take that moment to pause and to listen to all that God has given us and what we're called to do with it. So we take the time when we gather and worship to give back a portion of what God has given us, to continue to build up the kingdom of God, and to continue to do the work that God has called us to do. So in this moment, let us reflect on what God has given us and to think about how we might use our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness to build up the kingdom of God. If our ushers will please come forward. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the light and love around us and for the fire of faith within us. As we go forth from this place, let all our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness reflect the one who is the image of your glory, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Now, friends, we're going to sing this next song, but, but I want to tell our young disciples something. Because sometimes, grown-ups are really bad about telling you what God is doing. Sometimes, grown-ups are really bad at sharing God's love. But I want to promise you something, and I want you to hear it real clear, that God loves you, and we're called to love other people, too. So let us sing this song, looking at Jesus and remembering what it is we're called to do, to love God and to love others, and here in this place, to welcome all. Let's sing. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazareth. Savior's love for me. 
Leon, if you'll come up. Friends, part of this journey, if you'll just have a seat for a moment, um, part of this journey of looking at um, what God is calling us to do is recognizing some of the changes we might need to make in our own lives and in the faith of the community. So the renovation team has been working hard, um, and I'll let Leon share what they're doing and what they're asking of you to do in these next few weeks. So good morning. I'm sorry last week that uh, the audio wasn't good for you online, so you didn't hear the message that I gave the congregation as Pastor Nicole said, the renovation team uh, kicked off a marketing campaign. It feels this is a perfect time for us to rebrand the name of our church in the community. So um, to get those creative juices flowing, a name thrown out there was uh, 3rd Avenue uh, UMC. Um, but we're open to your thoughts. Um, we're looking for your prayers. There's a little mailbox out back. If you have an idea to possibly rename the church to get it out there up to the community, we'd love to hear what you have to say. If you're homebound and have some thoughts, you're welcome to email me at lmaloki at gmail.com or send it to Karen in the office. She'll get it to me. We're looking to vote on this in March. So uh, the more input we get, the more opportunity we have to, to, to discern over that. So thank you so much for that. Bye. place. I am excited for what God is doing um, as we go out into the world. So I'm going to invite you to stand again and receive a blessing as we come down off the mountaintop to rejoin others to share what God has called us to do. Friends, bear witness to the love of God in this world. So to those whom love as a stranger, find in you a generous friend. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen. Amen.